Hello. Now we will discuss reciprocal of quadratic function. Okay. Let me ask you a few questions. You've done a lot of reciprocal functions by now and you've sketched them many times. Now, if you have a reciprocal of a quadratic function, will you always get vertical asymptotes? That's the first question. Or will you always get uh, horizontal asymptote? That's the second question. Will you get x-intercepts? Or will you always get y-intercepts? Think about these things. And then we'll go. So first question. Will you always get vertical asymptotes? Reciprocal sounds something over something, right? So in general, we have a quadratic function. And let me write a general quadratic function, right? So we have f of x equals to ax square plus bx plus c. Correct. This is in general our quadratic function. Now, we could write this quadratic function in factored form also. Whenever you are trying to do reciprocal or rational functions, you need to factor your quadratic function. Correct? So, what I will do is, I will write down it in factored form. So, I will write this as a times x minus some value, let's say x1, times x minus some other value, x2, where x1 and x2 are possible roots. Correct? They could be same also. Correct? They could be plus or minus or whatever. These are all the possible roots. But in factored form, I could get this as my function. Now, if this is my function, then what is going to be reciprocal of this function? then in general g of x will always be 1 over a over x minus x1 times x minus x2. Is that correct? Always. Now, if I have this as my reciprocal, then I expect some vertical asymptotes. Is that okay? Yes, I do. Because the denominator cannot be 0. So what is my restriction here? The restriction here is that x is not equal to x1 and x is not equal to x2. Otherwise, if x is x1 or x2, this is my restriction. So, it seems, it looks like that I will always have a vertical asymptote. But in fact, no. It is never so. And it looks as if I will have two vertical asymptotes. Well, well you can imagine these two points could be seen. In that case, well, one asymptote at least, right? One vertical asymptote at least. Because x1 could be, could be 2, same as x2. For example, I can have x minus 2 whole square. Correct? Yes, I can have. So if I have x minus 2 whole square, then there is only one value. Okay? Because uh, x equals to 2 will give me 0 in the denominator both x1 and x2 are same because we have a double zero, correct, at that point. Uh, but there are times when this may not be zero. So that is very interesting and this is what you learn today. So I'm not going to really make an accurate graph. For that, we have another exercise for you, correct, just as you did with linear functions. Now, but I'm giving you concept here. So let's try to understand concept here. How to draw reciprocal of a function from a given quadratic function. So one option here for us is like this, which is generally the case. We have a graph here, right? And then we have a quadratic function. Let me draw a quadratic function in red. So let's say we have this quadratic function, correct? Now, in case I have to draw a reciprocal of this function, what should I do? In general, this is the process to be followed. Extremely beautiful process. Very easy, follow all the steps. Now, reciprocal of this red quadratic function, reciprocal of 0 does not exist. So, we have a vertical asymptote here. So, at this point, draw the vertical asymptotes. There are two points like this. Draw the vertical asymptotes. I'm not writing any numbers here because it doesn't make difference. If I write 1 here, 2 here, it doesn't make difference, right? It doesn't matter. x1, x2, think like this. Well, if not, well, sometimes it is easy to write but they don't have any meaning, okay? 
minus 1 and at 2 I am writing 2. So basically I am trying to say that one of the root of my quadratic function is at minus 1 and this is at 2. That means x1 is equal to minus 1, x2 equals to 2. Correct? So I have in denominator x plus 1. So I'll write this equation as since I have put those values. So I'll write this g of x is equal to 1 over. I'm not writing a, okay, it doesn't matter. It will become too complicated. And we are running away from the main objective. Let's say equations like this. Correct. In that case, what happens? This is kind of thing you get, right? You got two roots. So you got a vertical asymptote here. Reciprocal of positive is always positive, correct? Let's say this is value y as 1. So this will be invariant, right? As you go less value, your reciprocal will be higher. And as you go higher value, so you have a graph here like this. Similarly, you have on 1 over y here positive, right? So here also you have a graph of reciprocal kind of like this. Is it okay? Now how about the middle? Let's say this value is, let's say this value is, let's say, 5. Let's, because we are taking this as 1. Let's say this is 3, okay? So this will be 1 third kind of here, right? Vertex. Let's say this is 2. So it will be half kind of here, right? So, uh, so, so the inside will be kind of like this. We say that the reciprocal of a quadratic function is basically in three parts where these two positive reciprocals look like 1 over x like this, right? These are your invariant points where y is 1 and the center parts looks like this. So in general, if there are two roots for a quality function, this is the kind of reciprocal we are expecting, correct? Now, if there is only one root, so I'm not left with much space here. Anyway, I'll draw one here and I'll use what I have, right? Good way of using. Let's say x1 and x2 are same and so we have a graph which is like this. Do you see that? Now I don't have two roots but I have only one. So now where is my vertical asymptote? Vertical asymptote is my x-intercept. So that's my vertical asymptote. So I'll draw my line here, right? So that becomes my vertical asymptote. And how will my graph look like? Can you draw it? My graph will now look like this. Positive reciprocal will always be positive, right? And you approach zero if you approach minus infinity that's clear <laughs> or plus infinity but if you approach closer to your y uh, vertical asymptote you approach infinity right here on the positive side this graph will be like this now this could be the example here could be like let me write this a function here could be like f of x equals to let's say 1 over x this is minus whole square. So in that case we only have a root at 2 then this point becomes 2 kind of. Okay. Now I'll give you an extremely important and very useful function and that is also a quadratic function and that function does not have a vertical asymptote. Funny. Now think about this. We have a quadratic function like this. Well quadratic function could have two roots could have one root or no root. So in case we have a quadratic function like this, let us say this is x square plus half. Okay? So this is half, right? And it has moved up. So there is no x-intercept. And therefore, reciprocal of this function will not have a vertical asymptote, right? So here, in this particular case, this value is half here, so reciprocal half will be 2, right? So kind of here, right? But as you approach positive infinity, reciprocal will approach 0. Or negative infinity approach 0, positive infinity approach 0. So basically, you have a graph like this. Do you see that? That's the reciprocal of this function. It does have a horizontal asymptote though. Do you see that? But it does not have a vertical asymptote. What is the domain of this function? Domain of our reciprocal, I'm saying, is x belongs to real numbers. It has got no limitation. Here, what is the domain? Here, the domain is x belongs to real numbers, but there is a restriction that x is not equal to 
minus 1 and 2 correct and here domain is x belongs to real numbers but x is not equal to 2 do you see that domains are different right in all the cases though range does not include 0 do you see that range does not include 0 it may be over some value right so here what is range range is y belongs to real number such that y is greater than or equal to 2 do you see that because this value sorry less than or equal to 2 this value is 2 right let me write this is wrong absolutely wrong where y is greater than 0 but less than 2 correct yes less than equal to 2 I'm sorry again so because it is 2 but not is never approaching is approaching 0 but never being 0 right here the range will be y belongs to real number but y is not equal to 0 correct and in this case range will be y belongs to real number but y is always greater than 0 do you understand never equal to 0 so in all the cases we do have a horizontal asymptote right so let me write that common property here so we do have a horizontal asymptote and the horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0 is it okay because as you approach plus infinity or minus infinity your function approaches 0 correct so that is important and in each case do we have a y intercept yes we have y intercept in all the cases correct we don't have x no x intercept correct no x intercept because we have a horizontal lesson to does that answer your questions and it is if the question is reciprocal of a quadratic function always has a vertical asymptote what is going to be your answer not always you can always give this kind of an example and say well it does not have your exercises to give me reciprocal quadratic functions which have one vertical asymptote two vertical asymptotes and no vertical asymptotes right and explain why is it so correct I hope you understand the concept and we'll have more examples on reciprocal quadratic function but that gives you fairly good idea of how to sketch reciprocal of a quadratic function and what should be its domain and range okay thank you